Welcome to this Copasi video tutorial on parameter scanning and sampling. Parameter scanning and sampling are two powerful techniques that are used to address a number of questions such as how much the behavior of the system depends on the parameter's value, are there parameters that need to be fine-tuned for the system to show a specific behavior, what properties of the system are more robust or fragile. These questions become particularly relevant when the parameter values are unknown and we want to assess whether this lack of information has a strong impact on the predicted behavior of the system. Let's have a look at the parameter scanning. The idea is to systematically change the value of our parameters within a given interval. First, we define a range of possible values, then we set a regular grid within this interval, and finally, for each of such values, we perform some calculation to see how the system behaves. Now, let's do a parameter scanning in Copasi. In the examples shown in this video tutorial, we use a modified version of Pritchard and Kell's model of yeast glycolysis. You can download the original model from Biomodels or JWS online. From the Tasks subtree, we now click on Parameter Scan. In this green box, we specify the kind of calculation we want to perform for each value of the parameter to be scanned. For this example, we choose Steady State Analysis from the drop-down menu. To specify the parameter that we want to scan, we have to create a new scan item. We do this by clicking on Create. Let's choose the Vmax of the glucose transporter, HXT. Here we have the specifications of our scan, for example the minimal and maximal value of the parameter and the number of steps. By default the minimal and maximal value are set as the current value of the parameter divided and multiplied by 2 respectively. We are free to change these values though. We can also choose to perform a logarithmic scan rather than a linear scan. This is useful if the interval of the parameter values is intended to cover some orders of magnitude around a certain reference value. Before running the scan, let's create a plot of reaction fluxes, so we can see how the steady state fluxes of the system change depending on the parameter value. I slightly modified the plot specifications so that only the steady state flux of the glucose transporter will be shown, as representative of the entire glycolytic flux. This will make the plot easier to read. Now let's perform the scan by clicking Run. For each value of the parameter, you have the steady state flux of the reaction HXT. As you can see, the higher the Vmax of the glucose transporter, the higher the corresponding steady state flux. You can also see that this trend seems to become less pronounced for higher values of the parameter, as if we are reaching a plateau. Now we add a new parameter to the scan. This time we choose the activity of exokinase, HK. We can choose to change the order in which these parameters are displayed. For example, we can push the activity of HK up. This has an effect on how the scan is performed and how the result is shown in the plot. In particular, for each value of the outermost parameter, the one at the top, a full scan of the innermost parameter, the one at the bottom, is performed. Let's see how this looks in the plot. As you can see, you have different lines. The innermost parameter, which is the activity of the glucose transporter, is on the x-axis. On the y-axis you have again the steady-state flux of HXT. These different lines correspond to different values of the outermost parameter, which is the activity of the exokinase. Now, knowing the biochemistry of this network makes us conclude that the lines in the lower area of the plot are associated with the lower values of the outermost parameter, while the lines in the upper part of the plot are associated with the higher values of the outermost parameter. In general, however, we may not know this. An easy way to check whether our guess is correct consists of swapping the position of the two parameters, creating a new plot reflecting the changed order of the parameters to scan, and rerunning the calculation.
This time, it is the activity of hexokinase to be on the x-axis, and each line corresponds to a given value of the glucose transporter activity, which is now the outermost parameter. The plot shows that the steady state flux increases with the activity of exokinase, although sometimes just slightly. This confirms our interpretation of the previous plot. You surely have noticed that scanning two parameters already takes a little while. The reason is that for each of these 12 possible values of the outermost parameter, we have to go through all the 10 values of the innermost parameter and run a calculation for each of them. When we add even more parameters to scan, the computing time can become substantially long, if not prohibitively long. In general, if you have n parameters to be scanned, and each of them can take n possible values, we end up having m at the power of n single calculations to perform. So if you have 6 parameters and 10 values for each of them, you have to run 1 million calculations, this effect is called combinatorial explosion. To deal with this problem, instead of scanning the parameter values, we can sample them. This means that we abandon the idea of picking the parameter values from a regular grid, and we rather pick them up randomly. The advantage of this approach is that when we sample, we allow the value of all the parameters to change simultaneously, as opposite to scanning. By doing so, we actually need a far smaller number of points in order to explore the parameter space. However, one should be aware of the limitations of sampling. For example, the parameter values that give rise to the real behavior of the system might be confined in a small region of the parameter space, and when sampling, we may just miss it. Some results might occur only rarely or not at all in the sample. Nevertheless, they might be the ones realized in nature. Now, let's do a parameter sampling in Copasi. Again, we go to parameter scan, and we select the kind of calculation we want to perform for each set of sampled parameter values. We choose again steady state. Now we have to specify the parameters that we want to sample. To do this, we first select random distribution from the drop-down menu. This means that the values of the parameter we are going to select will be picked up randomly from a given interval. Now we click on Create and we select the parameter we want to sample. We choose the Vmax of the HXT, the glucose transporter. Again, we are free to change the interval from which the parameter values will be sampled. You can also choose the distribution that will be used to sample the parameter. For this example, we use the uniform distribution, which is the default choice. In the same way, we add two more parameters to be sampled namely the Vmax of exokinase, HK, and the concentration of external glucose. We also rearrange the order so to have the Vmax of HXT at the bottom as the innermost parameter. Now we have to specify how many times we want to sample our parameters. If we were doing a scan and had 10 values for each parameter, we would have to run a thousand calculations. Because we are sampling, we can run a smaller number of calculations to get an overview on how the system's behavior changes with the parameters. We choose to sample the parameter's values and run the corresponding calculation 200 times. To do this, we select Repeat from this drop-down menu, we click Create, and we write here the number of sampling iterations. For this to work, we have to make sure that the element repeat is at the top of this list, so we move it up to the top. As we did before, we create a plot so we can have a visual representation of our results. It is important to make sure that in this case no lines are displayed, only dots. We also changed the plot specifications so that only the steady state flux of HXT is shown. Now let's run the parameter sampling. Again, in the x-axis we have the innermost parameter, which is the Vmax of the glucose transporter, and on the y-axis the steady-state flux of HXT. 
we can see that the range of possible values of the steady state flux becomes bigger as the Vmax of the glucose transporter increases. It also seems that for a given value of the glucose transporter Vmax, the dots are quite evenly distributed along such a range of values. We can see the effect of the third parameter introduced, the concentration of external glucose, by removing it from this list and rerunning the sampling. It is quite clear that now the dots are differently distributed. In particular, there seems to be a higher density of dots in the upper part of the plot. Without going to the reasons behind what we just observed, it is clear how by sampling we can find interesting information on how the system responds to simultaneous changes in different parameters with a relatively small number of iterations. On a final note, it is also worth mentioning that Copasi can perform a scan and a sampling simultaneously on different parameters. For example, here, for each value of the Vmax of HXT, which is the parameter to scan, we perform a sampling of the Vmax of HK with 200 iterations. Running this will take a while, as Copasi has to perform 2,000 individual steady-state calculations. Here we just jump forward and see the plot that is generated. Each line of dots corresponds to a given value of the outermost parameter, which is the one we were scanning. In the x-axis we have the innermost parameter, which is the one we were sampling. As you can see, in each of these lines, the dots are not evenly distributed. This is because the innermost parameter, which is the quantity on the x-axis, was randomly sampled. We hope you found this video tutorial useful. Thank you for using Copasi.